you've got questions. Well, we've got answers and we have the man to answer them. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer. Hey, it's good to be with you, Bob. I'm uh, looking forward to another good question. Oh, uh, plenty of good questions. Our our readers ask such good questions, right? It's sort of like what the um, that Nobel Prize winner said when he won the Nobel Prize years ago that his mother instructed why. So what did he attribute winning the Nobel Prize? And he said, my mother sent me off to school, not saying give good answers, but ask good questions. Mm. All right. I like so, it. Here we go. Good question. I understand I can contribute as much as $85,000 to a 529 plan in 2023 and treat the contribution as if it were spread over a five-year period. Do I have to make that contribution, the $85,000 in one lump sum, or can I spread it over calendar 2023? Yeah, this is an interesting question. And certainly you're able to uh, you're able to do this for those who are not aware, this is a special rule for 529 plans where you can make an election to treat whatever you put in as if it were spread out over five years. Now, you can't, let's say an individual decided to put $30,000 in, you can't say, oh, spread it out only over two years, right? And, and fill it up over two years. It literally is treated as though if you make the election, it's a five-year thing. So in that example, it would be $6,000 each year, but it's on a yearly basis. So whatever you do this year, whatever goes in in 2023, you can make that election to spread it out over a five-year period. And so as long as you made no more than $85,000 of total contributions this year to the 529 plan of a single individual, that amount would be able to be spread over the next five years without incurring any gift tax. Now, it's also worth noting, Bob, that for most people, at least right now, going over your gift tax exclusion is probably not a big deal because once you go over your annual amount, you just start eating into your lifetime amount. And that lifetime amount is roughly $13 million per person this year. So for married couples, we're talking about roughly $26 million in 2023. Mm, so the consequence of, of putting more than 85,000 into a 529 plan would mean that what? For most people, a little bit of paperwork. Yeah. is really what it comes down to. It's the filing of a gift tax return and uh, making sure it's properly reported that you've used some of your lifetime exemption. And it is fair to note that while the lifetime exemption this year is $13 million on the estate and gift tax, that's a combined amount. Uh, it is scheduled to go back down in 2026, back down to just half of what it is today. So that would be about six and a half million but that still covers the overwhelming majority of individuals and still means married couples would be able to give $13 million away without any sort of gift or estate tax. Yeah. So again, if someone contributed more than 85,000, the distribution would still be tax-free for qualified educational expenses? That's right. Yeah. There's not the a maximum amount that can go into the 529 is actually determined at the state level. And in some states it's, you know, like 300,000 in some states, I, I think may have changed, but I believe at least recently the highest was $529,000, which I can't believe is a particular coincidence uh, on that since these are 529 plans. And, but once that, you know, like you could dump in that amount of money right away if you wanted, it would require using up some of your lifetime exclusion and you'd have a lot of money in a 529 plan. But it could potentially give rise to, you know, what I've referred to in the past as a dynasty 529, where because you can change the beneficiary on those 529 plans to related family members with pretty, pretty, you know, pretty easily, mm -hmm. you could use that account, use it for one child's education, then another, then another, then the grandchild's education and so forth. So, uh, yeah, you, the, these plans are are able to accept a lot of dollars into them in most cases. Yeah, so there may be a curious planning opportunity that comes as a result of Secure Act 2.0 in the sense that I could convert the 529 plan into a Roth uh, as the owner. Yeah, uh, it, it, there is an opportunity there, but it's one that you can't do for 15 years, uh, or at least you have to have the account for 15 years. If you've had one already, that time will count towards this, but you can't have the account for less than 15 years. And even if you've had the account for that period of longer, you're unable to move any money that went into the account or the earnings on those dollars in that went in in the last five years. So it's somewhat limited, plus the beneficiary of that account 
uh, has to be the same as the owner of the Roth where the money would go, and they have to have compensation, and you can't move more than the annual IRA contribution. And even if you do all that, it's subject to $35,000 top. So, I mean, there's a lot of ands, ifs, buts, a lot, you could see here, a lot of rules and caveats. So that's probably not what most people will be putting in those large amounts for. Uh, but if you happen to have leftover money after people go to school and so forth, then that is certainly one new option uh, that will be effective next year in 2024. All right. Well, here's one thing I do know that our, our readers and viewers and listeners can contribute their questions in a lump sum or they could spread them out over time. That's true. That's true. And unfortunately, while we like to educate people, you cannot send, I mean, I wish they could send their 529 plan money as a qualified education expense here, but alas, no such luck. So you can only send your questions and you can do that by emailing us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, go ahead, email us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to seeing your questions in our inbox real soon. 